Welcome back, everybody, to the New York Knicks, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K23. Today we are wrapping up the second offseason of the series as we go over free agency and everything in between. Last episode, we had the 2024 NBA draft, and in case you missed that episode, I'll leave a card at the top right so you can check it out. In the draft, we ended up with three new rookies selecting DJ Ramses, Coco Diablo, and Rock Khalif Dumbu, all three of whom are shooting guards. If you missed that episode, you're probably wondering why I only drafted shooting guards, but I explained the rationale in that episode. But long story short, I'm really focusing on positional versatility, and I think all three of those guys can do a number of different things on both ends of the floor. There were plenty of fireworks during the draft in terms of big-time trades. Of course, we made a move to go up and get Coco Diablo, trading away Mitchell Robinson. And there were some other big moves as well. The number one overall pick was traded from the Spurs to the Thunder, and notable stars like Zach Levine, Bradley Beal, and Wendell Carter were also moved. So it was a really exciting NBA draft in terms of all these new rookies getting picked, in terms of us making big moves. And in terms of the rest of the league, seeing a lot of big-time players in new places, which should certainly shake up the dynamics of the league, which I'm going to be pretty excited about going forward. But we still have free agency to get through as well. Another opportunity for big names, not just to sign in new places, but to also possibly see some trades as well. So we still have a lot to go here in season number two's offseason, and I fully expect our roster to look quite a bit different. But for now, I am really excited about our rookie class with Ramses, Diablo, and Dumbu. So as we go into the offseason, obviously we're looking for star power. We're the New York Knicks. We want star power on our roster. We also have to fill out our holes, which I would say mainly is power forward and center, while also being smart with our money. So let's get this show on the road. We'll start with team and player options here. We have a number of team options that we're going to accept, and we will bring back all five of these players. Now remember, in the last episode, we let Jay Sean Tate get unprotected for the expansion draft, but the game protected him instead when we protected Ahmed Kabongo and the game let him go anyway, and I don't know why. So I thought the most fair thing to do would be to swap those guys. So those guys are swapped. Kabongo is back on the Knicks. Here's a look at all of the team and player options that have been declined around the rest of the league. Kawhi Leonard and Anthony Davis headlining the list of guys who will now be entering free agency. We have a qualifying offer for a little over $7 million on Omer Yurt 7, which we will accept. And that'll bring us to free agency. So we have to dissect this roster, figure out what we're going to do. Again, we're looking for star power. We're looking to add really high-level players. But in terms of filling out our roster, we only have one power forward and we only have one center. So we got to add some size. Before we start, we're going to be making a quick trade. I'm going to be sending away Wendell Moore to the Toronto Raptors. I was pretty excited about acquiring Moore back in season number one. And I think he's a really good young player. But we have a log jam of wings. Wendell Moore's kind of the odd man out, so I'm willing to deal him away along with a trade exception and a future second round pick for a future top three protected first rounder in a couple of years from now from the Raptors. We'll also be renouncing the rights of guard Trevor Keels along with the trade rights of Julius Randle because his trade rights were in the Wendell Moore trade I just made. And then we're also going to be sending away Duncan Robinson to the Jazz for a couple of future second round picks. I'm really just trying to clear some money up just so I can get some flexibility to start spending. So I accidentally simulated through the first stage of free agency. So guys like Anthony Davis and Jalen Brown who were in here are now off the table. Not that I was planning to go after any of those guys in specific. In terms of unrestricted free agents, there are some good players in here like Kawhi Leonard, DeJounte Murray, DeMar DeRozan, and some young restricted guys as well like Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, and Tyrese Maxey. None of those older unrestricted guys really interest me, so I really want to focus on the power forward and center positions. I really did think about DeMontis Sabonis for a little bit. He's a really good playmaker, and that's something I value pretty strongly, but he only has B interior defense, and what I look for in a center is somebody who can be a rock down low. I think somebody who could do that role is Isaiah Stewart, who spent three and a half seasons with Detroit, traded away to the Bulls at the deadline. He's a little bit undersized at six foot eight, but he's a big physical player, 250 pounds, talented offensively, pretty good interior defender. So we're going to offer him a one-year deal. I don't want to lock him up too long for around $18 million. And I'm going to offer a similar contract to James Wiseman, the former number two overall pick by the Golden State Warriors. He's a seven-footer with really 
a lot of potential that just is kind of untapped at the moment. I think the ceiling with him is really high, and I think a change of scenery would do him well. So we're going to offer him a one-year deal for $20 million, actually $20.01 million, hoping the Warriors don't match. A player I've been eyeing up for a little while is Mo Bamba from the Orlando Magic. So we're going to offer him, again, a one-year deal for a little less money because he is unrestricted. All three players accepted. We can sign two, although I only really want one. And ultimately, I ended up choosing James Wiseman of those three. The Warriors did not match the offer. So that means James Wiseman is a New York Knick. Wiseman has not lived up to expectations with the Golden State Warriors, but I believe he has the ceiling to be a really good player. He's a seven-footer who's a phenomenal rim protector, really good shot blocker, really good rebounder, and on offense, he's got upside, not just as a lob threat, but also as a jump shooter. He's got a B three-point rating, and at only like 22, 23 years old, I think the sky's the limit for him. I think his best basketball is ahead. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And because that we signed James Wiseman, we don't really need Omer Yurt 7 anymore. So we're not going to match his offer from the Atlanta Hawks. That brings us to the end of free agency. I ultimately decided not to sign anybody else other than James Wiseman. I wasn't really interested in any of the other guys here. There are some good players still available like Sadiq Bey, Cole Anthony, amongst others. So as we look at the free agency moves around the league, the shocking one is that Kawhi Leonard signs with the Detroit Pistons. Kawhi wanted to get out of LA, the Clippers are a mess, and he wanted to go back to not necessarily a big market team, but sort of a young team who needs a leader like the Pistons. Replacing him on the Clippers will be Jalen Brown and DeMar DeRozan. So the Clippers are clearly going all in once again. This will be their new Kawhi and PG essentially. Jalen Brown in particular is a big deal coming from the reigning NBA champion Boston Celtics. He's now going to be the face of the franchise over there. So Boston loses out on Jalen Brown. Who are they going to get to replace him? As you can see here, DeJounte Murray signs a five-year extension with the Hawks, but he is not staying in Atlanta. This is a sign and trade. He is going to the Boston Celtics. Atlanta was not overly interested in re-signing DeJounte Murray, at least for that type of contract. The only reason why he signed with the Hawks was so he could get a five-year deal in order to move in a sign and trade. So obviously this is not fair value in a vacuum for DeJounte Murray, a couple of role players and draft picks. But keep in mind, it's either the Hawks lose DeJounte Murray or they get that. So Atlanta will take what they can get. And now DeJounte Murray joins forces with Jason Tatum of the reigning champion Celtics. Anthony Davis returns to the Lakers. Most of the restricted guys return to their former teams. DeMontis Sabonis signs with the Magic. I really like this move for Orlando. They're signing a proven all-star. They're trying to show that they're ready to win with this young core. They've got a really good group of young guys. Lonzo Ball signs with the Rockets. Pascal Siakam returns to the Raptors. CJ McCollum signs in Indiana. Obviously, the Pelicans traded for Bradley Beal to replace him, so it's not a big deal. Kyle Kuzma signs with the Utah Jazz. Kyle Lowry signs with the Wizards. I don't really know why. The Wizards are kind of stinky, but okay. Bogdan Bogdanovich signs with the Mavericks, adding some more spacing for Luka and friends. Jared Vanderbilt to the Blazers. That's a really nice deal for Portland. Miles Turner to the Nets. Isaiah Stewart signs with the Spurs. Nick Claxton to the Wizards. Buddy Heald to the Sixers. Pokushevsky and P.J. Washington to the Bulls. Kobe White to the Nuggets. Jalen Smith to the Rockets. Jakob Pertl to the Blazers. And that's pretty much it. That's what free agency looks like here in season number two. We only make one move, signing James Wiseman, but I don't think our offseason is quite done yet because I do want to get active in the trade market. We still only have three big men with the signing of Wiseman, and we still have a log jam at guard. With us drafting DJ Ramses, Coco Diablo, and Cesar DiCarlo with high draft capital within the past few years, I think Jalen Brunson has kind of become the odd man out. Brunson's been a really good point guard for us the last two years, but he only has one more year on his deal. He does have a player option for next year, but I would assume he would decline it to enter free agency. So because of that, I think a Jalen Brunson trade could make a lot of sense. A team who could use a guard is the Atlanta Hawks, and I know they are one of our rivals, but with losing DeJounte Murray, they only have two guards on their roster. As we look at their team, they have invested a lot in the front court over the past couple of years. They re-signed Onyeka Okongwu, they took Omer Yurt 7 from us, they made some other additions. So I think John Collins has kind of become the odd man out over here. Collins has nearly an identical contract to Jalen Brunson, one more year plus a player option. So a Jalen Brunson-John Collins swap makes a lot of sense. The Hawks won't do it straight up, so I'm willing to add a little bit more, and I think this is a pretty good trade for both sides. 
So we'll be sending away Jalen Brunson, along with Dominic Cherry, who I do like, but again, we have so many guards, I don't think we're going to need Dominic Cherry. The Hawks will, because they need a backup point guard behind Trey Young. Along with that, we're going to give up the Raptors pick that we just got in the Wendell Moore trade moments ago, along with two second round picks. I think this is a good trade for us. We don't need Jalen Brunson, we don't need Dom Cherry, and we get a legitimate star player at the four. So this is our splash move of the offseason. I know we've been targeting bigger names like Shea Gilgis Alexander and Zion Williamson, but when life gives you lemons, sometimes you got to make lemonade. And John Collins is not a bad alternative. He instantly becomes the highest rated player on our roster and a real player we can build around. John Collins will start at the four for us. He's around six foot nine. He's a good offensive player who can score the ball from all three levels. But the big thing with him is his ability as a dunker and a lob threat. Freak athlete, solid defender, pretty good inside, doesn't really have the positional versatility to switch onto the perimeter, unfortunately, but I do think he is a pretty solid modern four, and again, he technically is not under contract next year. He does have a player option, which I kind of think he's going to decline. And then in Atlanta, Jalen Brunson will probably start at the two guard alongside Trey Young with Dom Cherry and Trey Bell coming off the bench. So let's wrap up the offseason now, starting with player progression. John Collins goes up one. He's now the highest rated player on the team. Cesar DiCarlo goes up three. That is very encouraging. Splash Mayo goes up by three. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I thought Jackson Watkins would take a bigger jump than Mayo. Watkins ends up going up by two. And then all the young guys, for the most part, go up a little bit as well. That'll bring us to the NBA Summer League. We've got a really good Summer League squad with DiCarlo, Ramses, and Coco leading the way. We're going to have Coco Diablo come off the bench for now. I want to see what he can do in a sixth man microwave scorer type of role. So we're going to simulate through the Summer League regular season, starting with the first game against the Boston Celtics, the defending NBA champs. And we end up winning by two. DJ Ramses with 14-7 and seven on pretty good shooting. DiCarlo was good. Feinstein with a double-double. Coco Diablo with 8 and 10 assists. So that'll bring us to the second game. Before that, I made a little switch to the team. I want Coco Diablo to start now. So DJ Ramses will play the 3. And Diablo will slide into the 2 guard as we face off against the Portland Trailblazers. Pretty close game here, but the Blazers steal it away late. DJ Ramses was really good, though. 22-5-5. and five. Feinstein with another double-double. Diablo was good. Mayo was pretty good. DiCarlo with 10 assists, although he shot the ball kind of poorly. And then in that game, Rock Khalif Dumbu broke his vertebrae. Uh, that's pretty bad. That's not just going to keep him out of Summer League. That is going to keep him out for most of the entire season. So a huge loss. One of our first round picks going down with a really bad injury. That's really unfortunate for Rock Khalif Dumbu, who's really going to miss some time of development over the next really six months. We will win our final regular season game here against the Spurs. Feinstein with 22. Ramses with 18. Another double-double for Coco Diablo. DiCarlo was pretty good as well. So we end up going 2-1. and one. I still feel like the Summer League regular season at least was a failure just because of the injury to Dumbu. As we look at the numbers, though, most of the young guys played well. DJ Ramses with 18 a game. He was really solid. Coco Diablo led all of Summer League in assists, averaging 8.3 a game. So that's pretty cool, I suppose. He had 25 total. The next highest was 21. So our first playoff game is against the Blazers, the team who beat us earlier in the regular season. They were led by Roman Bulkman and Shaden Sharp, amongst others. So we're looking to get revenge. We're one of the lowest seeds in the tournament, even though we went 2-1. and one. I don't get how that makes sense, but we end up winning by only four points. DiCarlo with 24-6-4. Ramses with 15-6-6. Six six. Cabango and Feinstein were good. Coco Diablo was solid as well. So now we're going to play against the Pistons here in the second round of the Summer League playoffs. Jaden Ivey is injured, although he is expected to play in our game. And even alongside them, they've got plenty of talent with Justice Baxter, Jalen Duran, Banyu Wibawa, and Bol Bol. This is a really big team, so hopefully our front court will be able to match up. Pretty close game, but ultimately we would steal away in the second half. The defense really played well after halftime. DJ Ramses with 21-5-7. Splash Mayo playing well with 18 points. Feinstein, DiCarlo. Diablo and Cabongo also in the double figures as well. So it's good to see all of our core guys playing well as we move on to the quarterfinals against the new expansion team, the Seattle Sonics. 
They are led by their top draft pick, Monteo Moore Jr. out of the USC, who's really playing well for them so far here in the Summer League. And they've got a really talented young squad as well. Most of those guys are on the main roster. So I forgot to show the Simcast part, but we ended up winning by 17. Coco Diablo leads Foy with 25 points, pushing us into the semifinals against the Chicago Bulls. And on the other side, the Spurs are playing the Rockets. The Bulls are led by Jeremiah Robinson Earl, Ushman Jang, Dalen Terry, J.R. Johnson, and their first-round rookie, Max Maddock. A lot of, again, key players for their main team next year. Really close game. It's a two-point game with three and a half minutes to go. I figure, why not hop in? Why not get a look at some of our new guys in Summer League, including DJ Ramses, who has the ball inside. Ramses hoping to make a play. Gets it over to DiCarlo. Inside for Mayo! With the slam. The current lineup the Knicks have in the game is very small. I think Jackson Watkins is playing center. I don't know why. 106-106. Here is Diablo with 15 and 12. Step back. Three ball is good. Coco Diablo is such a gifted offensive player. He's a great scorer, great passer. Showing it off here in Summer League as the Knicks lead by three against Chicago. Dalen Terry inside for Usman Jang with the throwdown. Jang was a lottery pick a couple years ago by the Thunder. Didn't really work out. Getting a second chance here in Chicago. As Feinstein is wide open in the corner. He hits the three. 29 points today for Patrick Feinstein as the Knicks lead by four. Here is Jang coming inside. Ushman Jang, what a play. I think Oklahoma City might be regretting letting him go a little bit because he's playing really well right now. Here is DiCarlo, mid-range shot, no good. Inside, rebound by Mayo, who gets the and one. Splash Mayo with a huge play to put the Knicks back ahead by two scores. Now hoping to put the dagger in Chicago. Feinstein in the corner, bang! 32 for Patrick Feinstein, and this game looks over. The New York Knicks are headed to the Summer League Championship as they win 125-117. It's really fun seeing all these young guys really playing well together. Most of the guys on the Summer League team, Ramses, Diablo, DiCarlo, those guys are our core for the future. Ujman Cheng played really well with 23 points, but he was unable to lead the Bulls to victory. Patrick Feinstein with 32, 6 for 8 from beyond the arc. DiCarlo, 22 and 8. Coco, 20 and 12. Mayo with 18. Rams is a little quiet for his standards, but still pretty solid. So that'll bring us to the Summer League Championship as we will face off against the Houston Rockets, who were able to defeat the Spurs by 16 points. The Rockets got a talented young team led by Jabari Smith Jr. They also have former number one pick Jaden Lewis Cameron. This year's number two overall pick, J.J. Henderson. So a lot of high draft picks on this team. So I guess it makes sense that they made it to the Summer League Championship. So here we go. Hopefully our team can win a championship. It's not an NBA championship, but it'll do as we completely dominate them. Going to show the final sequence here. And there you go. The New York Knicks are Summer League champions as they defeat the Rockets in a blowout 86 to 114. I get that in the grand scheme of things, a Summer League championship isn't that big of a deal, but it's good to see our young guys playing well together, learning how to win together. Hopefully they're going to be winning some more championships in the future. Coco Diablo, the overall Summer League MVP, leads away with 18 points. DiCarlo, 16, 5, and 6. Ramses with the exact same stat line. Mayo also in the double figures as well. So overall, good win. Good showing here from the young guys here in Summer League as we take a look at the final stats. DJ Ramses leads us in scoring. Cesar DiCarlo not too far behind along with Coco Diablo. Unless we acquire a star, those three, Ramses, DiCarlo, and Diablo, are kind of our big three in terms of young talent. Obviously, we've got some more established players as well, like R.J. Barrett and John Collins as well. So I think this team really is a good mix of young guys and veterans as well. So that'll bring us now to the final stages of the offseason, starting with the All-Star City selection. The All-Star festivities will be in Los Angeles this year. And then as for the draft class, I will be starting construction on the draft class pretty soon. If you'd like to make a custom player, make sure to go join the Discord. The link is in the description. We only have 13 players on the roster, so we're going to be signing some guys for the end of the bench, starting with Alexander Swift III. He was an undrafted free agent last year. Really good shooter at the point guard position. Next up, we'll be signing Hector George Strada, solid 3 and D wing. He's only 22 years old, another undrafted guy from the first draft. And then we're going to be signing Ron Harper Jr the former Rutgers Scarlet Knight to a two-way contract so those three guys will now be added to the squad I think the first two guys we signed will probably see a majority of their time in the G League this year 
So that'll wrap up today's episode. Next time we will play our opening game against the Phoenix Suns. We're going to play another game as well, probably against Atlanta. Going to look at Jalen Bronson with the Hawks. This is what our opening day lineup will look like. DiCarlo, Ramses, Barrett, Collins, and Wiseman with Coco Diablo coming off the bench, leading the second unit along with Cam Reddish, Splash Mayo, Emmanuel Quickly, Patrick Feinstein, and Ahmed Kabongo. There are going to be some other lineup combinations I think we're going to try possibly going with Coco Diablo at the point guard position and having Cesar DiCarlo come off the bench. Another thing we could do is we could go small with Diablo at the two, Ramses at the three, Barrett at the four, and John Collins at the five with Wiseman off the bench. So there are a few different ways we could go about it. I think we're going to experiment with it early in the season. So that'll wrap up the episode. I really like this team for season number three. Let me know what you think of the squad down below. I really think this team could make a run into the postseason. So it'll be interesting to see how their journey unfolds. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.